Let's take a look at some of the properties of the cross product. The first property we see here is the anticommutative property. This property states that the cross product of u with v is equal to the cross product of negative v with u. This is called the anticommutative property because based on the traditional commutative property, we would expect that the cross product of u with v would be equal to the cross product of v with u, but that is not the case. The second property we have is the distributive property. This property states that the cross product of one vector, u, with the sum of two vectors, v and w, is equal to the cross product of u with v plus the cross product of u with w. This is a similar concept to the traditional distributive property. Next, we have the multiplication by a constant property. This property states that a constant times the cross product of two vectors is equal to the cross product of either the first vector times the constant with the second vector, or the cross product of the first vector with the second vector times the constant. Notice here that the constant does not apply to both vectors when taking the cross product, which is different than what we would typically expect. The fourth property is the cross product of the zero vector property. This property states that the cross product of any vector with the zero vector is the zero vector. This is true no matter the order used in taking the cross product. Our next property is the cross product of a vector with itself. This will always yield the zero vector. The last property is the scalar triple product property. This property states that the dot product of one vector u and the cross product of v with w is equal to the dot product of the cross product of u with v and the vector w. The order here is important because, as we saw in the first property, the cross product of u and v is not the same as the cross product of v and u. Let's use the properties of vectors to find the cross product of the given vectors a and b. We want to find the cross product of a minus b with a plus b. Notice that this looks similar to the distributive property of cross products. Let's consider the vector a minus b to be u. Then we can rewrite the expression to say a minus b cross a plus b equals u cross a plus b. Now we'll substitute in a minus b for u. This gives us a minus b cross a plus a minus b cross b. We can now apply the distributive property again to get a cross a minus b cross a plus a cross b minus b cross b. Recall that a vector crossed with itself is equal to the zero vector, so we know the first and last terms are zero. This leaves us with negative b cross a plus a cross b. Notice here that we can apply another property of the cross product. We know that a cross b is equal to negative b cross a by the anticommutative property, so we can rewrite this expression once more to be 2 times a cross b. Okay, now that we've simplified the expression, we need to find a cross b. The cross product a cross b gives us a vector with an x component of negative 40, a y component of 29, and a z component of 13. Now. All we need to do is multiply each component by 2. This gives us a vector with an x component of negative 80, a y component of 58, and a z component of 26. Therefore, a minus b cross a plus b gives us the vector negative 80, 58, 26.